Lieutenant, we were not working together in the Pacific. Real teamwork didn't come until months after Pearl Harbor and Spatan. Take, for example, the problem of food supply. We had ample food, but not where it was needed, and we didn't have the ships to get it there. Our job was to find food close to the men who were going to consume it. We found it here in New Zealand. That meant a tremendous saving in transportation. Now, now, here is the United States. We were shipping across the states and then a long 7,000 miles to our island bases in the South Pacific. New Zealand, in the South Pacific, was shipping 11,000 miles to the Allied forces in the Middle East. This lack of coordination was checked when New Zealand became a neighborhood store for the islands, supplying at present about half the food consumed by our fighting forces in the South Pacific area. That's a lot for a country with a population no greater than Detroit. Together with 30% furnished by Australia, this leaves only 20% to be shipped by the state. It's clear how much more space became available if you stop to think that every man in the armed forces eats a solid ton of food a year. Tanks, war machinery, the materials for fighting the war are coming from the states and ships that once carried food. Furthermore, our fighting men in the islands got much more fresh food than they did before. New Zealand has always produced fresh meat and dairy products for export, and about a year ago, special attention was given to producing other foods. Now New Zealand is filling our refrigerator ships, not only with meat and dairy products, but with loads of fresh vegetables. New vegetable growing projects have been started to furnish the needs of our ever-increasing numbers. Today, we are shipping to the islands a crop grown on New Zealand soil that was pasture less than a year ago. In return, New Zealand is receiving war materials, planes, and fuel. You've heard a lot about Lend-Lease. Well, we're Lend-Leasing industrial products to New Zealand, and New Zealand is supplying us with food. We call it reverse Lend-Lease, or better still, it means simply that we've learned to work together. Food goes up to the islands, and men, behind are the dates with girls, shoe shines, paved streets, and trams and taxis. Now there are jobs, building camps, mosquito control, the establishment of new beachheads and new airfields. As islands are captured from the Japanese, they must be supplied with men and equipment. The courage and stamina that went into a jungle attack must be sustained in a further effort the captured territory must be rebuilt. Henderson Field at Guadalcanal, once a place of bloody struggle, is now a well-established base for attack. From this jungle island and others like it, we are continuing to smash at Japanese power. Our strength depends upon the successful completion of countless jobs and their coordination. Careful planning is the key to coordinated effort, and for this reason, all allied operations in the South Pacific, sea, land, and air, have been unified under a single American command. Zealanders fly bomber reconnaissance planes, working in close collaboration with American air forces. This American crew, just back from a flight over enemy territory, makes its report to a New Zealand intelligence officer, who is assigned to collect information about an area which they patrol. They discuss observations made during the flight, weather reports, as well as discoveries of new enemy targets, and hand in their photographs. Later, the information is taken to a higher American command, where it is absorbed with other reports into a fairly comprehensive picture of the enemy's activities, a valuable weapon for the next day's operations. Another function of New Zealand's Air Force at Guadalcanal is carried out by its fighter squadron which engages in dogfights with Jap Zeros and provides protection for American bombers. At a control hut from which fighter planes are dispatched, the names of New Zealand and American fighters are chalked up on the same duty roster. They take turns at dangerous work here, thinking of it only as routine. It takes courage and intelligence, and a keen eye, and quick judgment. <laughs> Civilized men, threatened with destruction, have joined together and are striking back. Wherever the danger still exists, the work goes on. Fighter 2 from Arkwright, radio check. I receive you, uh, 5S5. How do you receive me? Go ahead. 
Arc right from fighter two. Arc right from fighter two. I receive you R5S5 also. Thank you. Well, he's all right, sir. <laughs>